Please welcome Dr. Michael Ramsey. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to the annual, the 11th annual summit meeting of the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. And uh, you probably noticed that um, we're in a different venue than we've been in the past. Uh, we're very fortunate that uh, UCI have let us have this wonderful amphitheater, and uh, it's a wonderful building. And so I really hope you enjoy this meeting. Um, the changes on the program, uh, President Clinton, for the first time uh, at the last minute, was unable to join us. Um, he's talked about a tight election going on right now. I don't know whether you know about that. Um, so, uh, but the Right Honorable Jeremy Hunt has sent in a video. He's, uh, some of you may remember him from previous meetings. Um, he was health minister in Britain. More recently, he was the chancellor of the Exchequer, the finance minister. And um, he sent a video in because he wants to be part of this meeting. So that's, we're welcome. I have to thank Sanaz Masumi, our chief operating officer, and the rest of our small team, Consuelo Tolentino and Aman Meshkati, for all the work they've put in to put this meeting together. And uh, I also want, if you meet Sanaz outside and you bump into her, Today, today is her birthday, so I hope you'll wish her a happy birthday. Um, so uh, to go on with the program, uh, there are four CMEs attached to this program for those of you who want them, and the eight CEs from NHQ, if you'd like those. Uh, and so with that, I think uh, we will get started. Um, I'd like to thank our founder, Joe Chiani, for all that he has done and continues to do for patient safety. He developed an advanced pulse oximeter when he just graduated from San Diego State University, and he did it in his garage, and it's still top of the line. It is the best oximeter out there, and he's just gone on from developing new devices, all with a focus on patient safety. Uh, he supported the World Health Organization, uh, and uh, their push, they finally made a big step forward with pa world patient safety, global patient safety. He's been to the global ministerial summits and given really amazing talks and uh, really supported global safety as well as uh, United States patient safety. Uh, he continues to be so innovative with uh, developments. As you know, probably the fentanyl overdose is now the leading cause of death in our adolescents in the United States. So he's now got an innocuous pulse oximeter that they can wear on their wrist and alarm them and they start to deset so they can uh, use some nasal Narcan and save their lives or their friends can. Um, he's also, those that want to get cured and get out of it, withdrawals are terrible and they've developed a new, monitor, a no, a new device that stimulates the cranial nerves behind your ear. You just place it over your ear and it uh, really, takes away most of the horrific changes that go on with withdrawal symptoms and makes it much more tolerable. So again, a great, great asset to our country and to our young people. Um, I think probably the thing that I really want to talk about to finish my opening is that Joe uh, co-chaired the Patient Council on um, Science and Technology Subcommittee on Patient Safety. And we presented that last year. And now a year has gone by, and really nothing has happened. President Biden is about to leave office. Uh, so this would be just a wonderful thing for him to do before he leaves office, to make his tenure really spectacular. And that is to institute the recommendations from the PCAS subcommittee. So if you could all write to him, and uh, write to your representatives as well to tell them this is what we need to do before he leaves office because it was his, he's the president of that uh, council of advisors. When Biden leaves office, there's a new president and presumably a new council of advisors. So we, we will lose all that work that Joe being co-chair of that uh, council has uh, have done. And many of you in the room have been involved with. So. Please, let's make a big difference and let's um, uh, 
get Biden to institute these changes, these great recommendations from the PCAS committee before he leaves office. Maybe on September 17th, World Patient Safety Day would be the greatest time to do that. So with that, please welcome our first speaker, Joe Kiani. Thank you, Joe. Please welcome Joe Kiani. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Yay. It's great to see you all here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for encouraging uh, this. Now it's become a world movement. So, yeah, this is the first year President Clinton is not with us. Uh, hopefully he'll be with us next year. This is also the year that, uh, unfortunately, we're without Steve Moreau, who was on our board for a while. Michael Saris, who was a champion of patient safety, unfortunately died actually at the beginning of COVID. So I, I regret that we don't have these people with us. But I got to tell you, the work these people have done, the work you all have done, uh, President Biden's work, uh, Jeremy Hunt's work, Tedros' work, we now have a movement. I am optimistic about the future of patient safety. We have uh, not only the WHO with its goal of 2030 to reduce preventable harm, medical deaths, we have... Um, the ministerial summit on patient safety, where ministers of health get together and plan how to get to zero in their countries. For the first time ever uh, in our country, actually on September 17th, the White House will be hosting an event on World Patient Safety Day to push forward the patient safety recommendations, the PCAST recommendations. They now have an assistant uh, director of patient safety reporting to the director who is running the cancer moonshot as well, to the president. And uh, we're encouraged. We're encouraged that uh, this thing that we started has helped somewhat in creating this really incredible world uh, movement. You know, my, my heart goes out to, and my prayer goes out to all those who are suffering from injustice, all those people that are dying from violence, uh, around the world, and even just yesterday in Georgia, the, the two children and the two teachers who were uh, prematurely ended. You know, there's a lot of problems here that, that we have in our world, uh, but I do believe in the power of micro-fixing, fixing what we can fix, th fixing things that we have the reach barely to fix, and that micro-fix for us all is to get rid of medical errors. The third leading cause of death in our country, uh, three million people worldwide die from it. And where? In a location that people expect and should expect to be the safest place in the world, our hospitals. And, you know, it would be all bad and gloomy if indeed to err is human and that error would lead to death. Because yes, to err is human. We, what, we make four or five errors a day. But we now know there's evidence-based practices that if put in place, we can get to zero. I've seen it firsthand at places like Children's Hospital of Orange County. I know Baylor Scott and White has had amazing uh, success. University of Vermont. And the list is long. People that put these evidence-based practices in place do reduce medical harm. And some of them have attained zero for months, some even years. A lot closer than 200,000 deaths a year that we get out of our 5,000 hospitals every year. So I'm happy we're gathered here today. I know we have an incredible group of people who've assembled, who we're going to learn from. Hopefully it'll energize us all. And I want to just say to you, if we all go away with a commitment that before we get together again next year, we've at least saved one life, each of us, just one life in our hospitals. I assure you, not only we will save more than one because of what you did, but it'll be, it'll be getting us a lot closer to zero. 
I, I have a slide. I don't know if you have it up here. I was going to just show you the recommendations that we've made to President Biden that we hope will roll out. Is the slide here? If not, I will just summarize it for you because I think I've memorized them. Um, one of them is, of course, getting the attention this needs, having President Biden and hopefully the future president make this a national priority. Secondly, having someone in his cabinet at the White House that is focused on patient safety, working with all the incredible organizations that they have, like AHRQ, like, of course, CMS, Medicare, everybody. Bring in the VA, bring in uh, all the different groups together to push for patient safety. Uh, one of the other recommendations has been to have them, I know we've done the work on our website, we have the list of what causes harm and how to fix it through the evidence-based practices, but have a group like CDC or AHRQ list the top 10 things immediately that are harming people by number of deaths that have solutions, evidence-based practices associated with them. And then encourage hospitals to implement it, including some of the ideas we've had here together, which is aligning the incentives where reimbursement is given even if someone is harmed, even for the secondary care needed for harm, as long as the hospital had the evidence-based practices in place for the harm that occurred. But the opposite, if they don't have it in place, they don't, they don't even get paid for the initial care that was given. Think about what that will do to every board of every hospital and the C-suite. Think about how that'll help empower the clinicians to go put those evidence-based practices in place. The other is to do research. You know, we have solutions for the top things. We know them, VTE, sepsis, failure to rescue, hospital acquired infection. But there's more that needs to be done. There's research that needs to be done. How do you get the other things fixed? There's new powerful technologies like AI that can be deployed to help clinicians find problems before it's too late, where they still have time to intervene. So these ideas are the ideas that we presented to the president. And it's in a report that hopefully you guys can download if you, if you go to the White House website under the uh, President's Council of Advisors in Science and Technology. But I'm excited. I'm excited that uh, the HHS secretary is aware of it. He's ultimately in charge of it. The White House is pushing it. There's a meeting on the 17th that I hope some of you have been invited to, to attend. I know they're looking for hospital CEOs, especially on the West Coast, that are ready to make a commitment. So if, if you are one of those hospital CEOs that are ready to make commitment to zero, I know some of you in the West Coast have already, please let them know or let me know and I'll get your contact to the White House if you'd like to attend the September 17th meeting. So, Look, I know the problem is still out there. I know with COVID, we took a step back with engagement from patients, engagement from families. And I know it became a situation where we have brand new nursing, brand new doctors and real issues that the hospitals are involved with. But I am optimistic that We've gone through the COVID uh, crisis. We've gone through the post-COVID um, instability. We're back. We're back. And now we're back in an environment where you got WHO, you got ministerial health uh, around the world that are looking at patient safety. You've got finally the United States White House president looking to do something about what we know is something we can do something about. These premature lives that come to an end don't need to happen in our hospitals. So I just want to thank you. Please don't give up. Don't stop. Let's be exemplary for each other. 
and uh, let's get to zero. I'm looking forward to the next couple of days with you. And again, thank you all for coming. Many of you come, uh, I think, all 11 times, all 11 years. Some of you, first time, we welcome you. Uh, please make a commitment. Save at least one life by next time we meet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please welcome Dr. Mike Dorkin. Welcome to, to our event. I'm privileged to be the chair of the Patient Safety Movement Foundation, um, and I'm looking forward to meeting all old friends, but um, many new friends uh, over the next couple of days. We've already mentioned uh, the names of some of the key global leaders, political leaders in uh, patient safety, and Dr. Tedros uh, from the World Health Organization, Jeremy Hunt, who uh, with uh, Hermann Gruyer from Germany uh, kicked off the first um, ministerial summit on patient safety. Uh, and that ministerial summit in, it, in itself has galvanized the impact in many countries around the world and has introduced a new dimension of political action um, from the top of the political offices, uh, not just from, uh, from the ground floor. So uh, a huge amount is done. Um, neither Jeremy nor Tedros was able to join us, but we will be seeing them uh, uh, on video over the next couple of days. But they have worked together to ask me to read a citation out um, uh, and present uh, a certificate. So I'll read this citation out. Um, this certificate is awarded to Joe Chiani uh, with the deepest respect from the global community of families, experts, policymakers and politicians in patient safety who have greatly benefited from his unwavering commitment to reducing avoidable harm to zero. His partnership with the World Health Organization, his contribution to the Global Patient Safety Action Plan, his outstanding leadership over many years at the Global Ministerial Summits on Patient Safety, and his drive and determination to ensure the ongoing advancement of science and technology across the global medical device industries have ensured that our patients at every level and in every setting continue to benefit from his latest advances to reduce avoidable harm. They close with the healthcare world is a safer environment because of his dedication and both patients and healthcare workers will continue to reap the benefits of his excellence for decades to come. Uh, so I'd like to now ask uh, Joe and if you could receive him with acclamation to come up and receive a certificate. Thank you. So, where are you? Wow. No, no. so we need to give Joe this. Um, um, uh, he's received many, many awards, but I'm hoping uh, this will be uh, one of the pride of places that he has in his office. So, thank you very much, so Joe. Much. Thank you. What an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Um, and don't forget the flowers. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank All you. the way from Europe. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.